the stars and the moon and the sun and their movement and positions, these things were very important tools to our ancient people. And they were much more important to them back then than they are to us today. Many people today living in bigger cities can barely even see any stars at night, even on a clear night. Well, the importance of our nearest star is obvious. Without it, no light, no life, no nature, nothing. Well, if you were to spend a year tracking the movement of our star, our sun, from our perspective, the sun has movement because we're tilted on an axis, you would notice that it appears to grow and it shrinks and it moves throughout the sky all year long. This is why the shadows that are created by the windows in your house move across the floor all year. The sun grows and it shrinks, the days get shorter, the days get longer. Well, there's a pattern to all this, and the pattern tells us the story of our sun god. This is the story that has been suppressed into mythology. Well, it also begins to build the template for the Christian Christmas story. As we near winter, we see on this slide here, we're nearing winter. The sun gets smaller. The sun gets lower in the sky. Our days get shorter and shorter and shorter. And if you were an ancient farmer, this is terrible news. Okay, if you're providing crop for your community, this is bad news. The days are getting shorter and it's getting colder. Night is happening faster and it's staying longer. It appears that if we were to continue on this course, the sun would disappear completely. It would keep on going on this track and sooner than later, we would be without a sun. But this doesn't happen. Instead, the sun stops. It stops dead in its tracks. And this, this happens on the first day of winter, December 21st. On December 21st, this also happens to be the shortest day of the year. On December 21st, the sun dies. On December the 22nd, the 23rd, and the 24th, the sun does not continue on its course. Instead, for three days, the sun idles. The sun is dead for three days. And on the morning of December the 25th, Christmas Day, Three days after the sun has died, a new sun is born, and it begins to travel back into the other direction, bringing life and light back into the world. The days start getting longer, they're not getting shorter anymore, and the new weather is right around the corner. So a new sun really is born on December 25th, and if it weren't for the birth and the resurrection of this sun, we would all perish. This is why we've worshipped this sun for millennia. The sun is literally our savior. Sun worship is worldwide. Few Christians now place any reliance upon the evidence from Josephus. The early fathers made this Jew admit that Jesus was the Son of God. Of course, the admission was a forgery. De Quincey states, the passage is known to be a forgery by all men, not lunatics. Of one other supposed reference in Josephus, Canon Farrar says, this passage was early tampered with by the Christians. The same writer says of the third passage, Respecting the third passage of Josephus, the only question is whether it be partly or entirely spurious. Lardner, the great English theologian, was the first man to prove that Josephus was a poor witness of Christ. And you, you'd have to think, really, Origen and all the first three centuries, there was not one apologist who was defending Christianity that quoted Josephus, and they could have, Origen could have said, ah, Josephus mentions Jesus because he didn't. They put it in after. Eusebius and his buddies did that. But the Jesuits have been counterfeiting history for hundreds of years, man. It's, it's all wrong. Um, Tacitus. Oh, Tacitus talks about Jesus. Certainly, this is the big one. 
Tacitus is the big one. Well, his histories, that's his true work, uh, but his annals, that's a forgery. And that's where he mentions Jesus. He doesn't mention Jesus here. Actually, he doesn't mention Jesus. He's, he mentions Crestus, who's not Jesus. And it's not saying that he did anything to prove that he did something. There's nothing. There's nothing there that says Jesus did anything. There's just mentions of Christians and mentions and just little brief. In fact, Suetonius, this is what Suetonius, they use this, mind you, right? This is supposed to be proof that Jesus lived. And they always, they should stop at least, they should stop quoting Suetonius because there's only three words. This is the sentence. Because the Jews of Rome caused continuous disturbances at the instigation of Crestus. You're going to go to court with that one? Jesus existed, look at that! It ain't going to work. Not in a real court. The quotation from Tacitus is an important one. The part of the passage which concerns us is something like this. They have their denomination from Crestus, put to death by a criminal as a criminal by Pontius Pilate during the reign of Tiberius. I wish to say in the first place that this passage is not in the history of Tacitus, known to the ancients, but in his annals, which is not quoted by an ancient writer. The annals of Tacitus were not known to be in existence until the year 1468. An English writer, Mr. Ross, has undertaken in an interesting volume to show that the annals were forged by an Italian, Bracciolini, I've got to leave it at that because I've got to tie, tidy up with what I promised I would um, and that is now please there's um, there's Dupuy 200 years ago exposed the solar the solar story Joseph Willis forgery in Christianity JM Robertson pagan Christs this one's the best I wrote to this guy, and uh, he lives in somewhere in the UK, the pagan Christ. This one is the best. You read this, it poetically dismantles the whole story, like I've tried to achieve to do. Jordan Maxwell helped in this one. The church, the book your church doesn't want you to read. This is brilliant. The Dark Side of Christian History by Helen Elebre. Brilliant book. Jordan, uh, Michael Tassarian, Astro Theology, D.M. Murdoch, Christ in Egypt. Yes, Christ was in Egypt. I've proven it. <laughs> oh, yeah. This one, Kersey Grave, Graves, remember, in the 1850s. This guy has actually revealed that the Flavians, Pisos, the Piso family, the most powerful family in history, is behind the whole lot of it. They made themselves Christ. They did. Vespasian did it. The father of Titus. He was the one that Tacitus says went around performing miracles and calling himself a god. And these guys are excellent too. Timothy Freak and Peter Gandhi. And they've got a series of books. Exquisite. Exquisite. Showing the, the, the truth behind all these gospels and, and, and myths and legends. Now, um, do we remember that image I showed you of Augustus with the crown of thorns? And, and uh, churchgoers will say, oh, look, we live in the year 2011. That's from when Jesus was on the earth. Well, <clears throat> this, these are some, some, some writings that have been discovered about the, uh, the calendar, the calendar that started around about that time with Augustus. The providence which rules over all has filled this man. Now a churchgoer will think, oh, that's got to be talking about Jesus. But it's Augustus. With such gifts for the salvation of the world as designate him as saviour for us and for the coming generations. Of wars he will make an end and establish all things worthily. That is talking about Caesar Augustus, the man with the crown of thorns, the original, the one and only, and his uncle, adoptive uncle, Julius Caesar. Julius means the son, Caesar means Christ. Caesar, 
Tsar, Caesar, Christ. And that's what all the, the pharaohs were Christ. They were all Christ. Horus was Christ. It's the everlasting story. By his appearing are the hopes of our forefathers fulfilled. Not only has he surpassed the good deeds of earlier time, but it is impossible that one greater than he can ever appear. Here's another one. The birthday of God has brought into the world glad tidings that abound upon him. Epitaphs. That's, that's what they are, man. And, and what we've done is we've, the, 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 the forgerers of history have gone and sort of plucked these things and attributed them to a certain saviour that they, they need for subject, subjugating and, blind, and blinding the masses. This day has given the earth an entirely new aspect. The world would have gone to destruction had there not streamed forth from him who is now born a common blessing. <coughs> this is Augustus we're talking about, same person, but easily attributed to the historical Jesus because it's the same epitaph. epitaph yeah. Uh, rightly does he judge who recognises in this birthday the beginning of life and of all the, power, all the eye powers of life. Now is the time ended when men pitied themselves for being born. He must have been a great man. Alexander Del Mar wrote about it, how they worship that man. He's a murderer. Oh yeah, he brought peace to the world, 40 year peace, Pax Domini, but with murder and the iron rod man, the Romans were fierce. I can go on, you can get the book that dismantles the whole story. We need to reclaim this false history and we need to reclaim such beautiful books as this, as, 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 as the Bible and show how this is our best, the best of the best, the cream of the crop, but we need to understand it. Like Shakespeare, he used historical personages, but he was writing plays. He was not teaching history. This is the same. And as I said before, the dominant, the dominant ruling power of the time will always pluck those mythologies from the skies and pull them down and, and attribute them to the, the ruling monarch of the time. The 18th dynasty, pharaonic dynasty, is absolutely probably the first ones to have done that. We've got uh, Amenhotep, Tuthmoses, Hatshepsut, Akhenaten, Tutankhamun and Nefertiti all in that one dynasty. It's all there. All those people. And uh, um, people like uh, Ahmed Osman have proven that you'll find Moses, Abraham, Sarah, Jesus, David all in that dynasty. Why? See, you have to understand that whilst th these people are not historical, they are still being pinned onto certain historical uh, personages because that's what you do. Like Plutarch said, if Evermerus was doing it, the Greeks have always done it. Oh no, there's a tomb to Hercules just outside of Athens. He lived. You ask the, you know, the Greeks who don't understand and they'll tell you that Hercules was a man, but the, the, the learned ones will say, oh, Hercules is up in the skies.